Hi, so a very popular video on my channel is a video on how to convert between mono and stereo tracks in Cubase. Well, the new Cubase 13 has brought something new to that process. So let's have a look at how to use that and whether the old method still holds any value. So let's go. Yeah, so like I mentioned in the intro, Cubase has basically always had the ability to convert a mono channel to a stereo channel and a stereo channel to a mono channel. But it has always been a bit, well, less ideal, I guess, because it would basically just create new channels from the original source channel. Let's have a quick look at how you could always do that. For example, in this project, I have a stereo track over here. I can then go to project, convert tracks, multi-channel to mono. And then I get a selection dialog to say, what are my source tracks? Well, the selected tracks. What I want to do to the source tracks after conversion, I want to keep them. And over here you have the option to choose the new names of the files that Cubase creates when you push OK over here. So in this example, it would basically just create two new mono channels, one with the left side of the stereo track and one with the right side of the stereo track. Now I'm not going to further show that in this video because that's all detailed in the other video, which I'll link at the end of this one. But the new thing in Cubase 13 is that you can now directly switch a channel from mono to stereo and from stereo to mono. And all of this works on audio channels, group channels and effects channels in Cubase 13. Now there are a couple of rules to this. For example, you cannot change the channel configuration while you're recording, obvious, right? And you can also not change the channel configuration of a frozen track and that also makes sense because for a frozen track, a new file has already been created and that's either mono or stereo, so you can't switch it up. Now there are some more specific rules when you're converting stereo to mono or the other way around, but I'll explain those during the demo. So let's have a look. Now the top track here is a mono guitar recording from my band Wash. Let's have a quick listen. And by the way, this also already has the new Cubase black valve compressor on there, as well as the EQ P1A, the Pultec emulation. And the fact that this is a mono track, well, you can see it from the waveform, but you can also see it over here on the channel configuration button. There's a single circle, so it's a mono track. And the popover help already indicates that you can click on it to switch between mono and stereo. And by the way, if you look at the mixer, over here, you can see that it basically contains the same channel configuration button, and you can also change the channel configuration between mono and stereo from the mixer view. Now you may wonder, why would you change the channel configuration of a mono track to a stereo track? Because the recording on that track is only mono, and it will definitely not suddenly become stereo when you change the channel configuration. Well, one big reason is if you would want to use stereo effects on this channel. Because let me show you what happens if I do that now. I can choose a Steinberg spatial and panner effect, for example, the mono to stereo converter. And let's listen to what that does on a mono track. Yeah, so it basically does not do anything except that it reduces the volume when you turn it on. And that's probably due to the phase cancellation that this effect now causes on a mono track. So let's now convert this channel to stereo and see how that makes a difference. So I can click on the channel configuration button and Cubase asks me to confirm. You can also turn this off if you don't like to confirm every time. But you can see now over here by this icon that it has become a stereo channel. So let's try this again. Yeah, so now you can see that this effect does do what it's supposed to do and it produces a nice wide stereo field. Now other things that have happened, if you look at the channel settings, you can see that all effects are now routed to in stereo over here. And if you look at the input routing, you can see that the input is now also taken as stereo. So if you would again record on this track, you would now be recording in stereo from two separate inputs. Now if the channel had been set to record from a mono bus before the conversion, that setting would actually have been maintained. For example, let's go back to mono. Let's switch this to a mono input. And if I now convert it back to stereo, you can see that the recording is still happening from the mono input because obviously Cubase has no way to guess which other input to use for the stereo recording. So when you're switching channels like this and still intend to record on those, make sure to check your input configuration. 
Now before I demo going from stereo to mono and what to watch out for, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. You can also subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I post another video. If you appreciate the content, you can use the virtual tip jar of the super thanks button below or buy anything via the affiliate links in the description to these stores, which is as always highly appreciated. So let's move on to converting from stereo to mono. So this is actually that same guitar track that we listened to a mono before, but now it's recorded with two microphones with each microphone being recorded on a separate input to this stereo track. And again, the new Cubase compressor and EQ are used, so let's have a short listen. Yeah, so definitely a wide stereo image to begin with already, if you listen to the separate tracks on the left side. First the right side. You can hear on the left side there was more high end, on the right side it was actually a ribbon microphone so there's less high end and together they produce a nice stereo image. Now you may wonder again why would you convert this channel to a mono channel? Well I have to admit it's probably less common. What I would probably normally do is I would actually split this stereo file into two mono tracks so that I could process the left side and the right side independently. But maybe if you just want to get rid of one side of this recording you can convert it to mono, but if you have other reasons to convert a stereo channel to a mono channel, let me know in the comments, I'm very interested. So let's see how this works then. Again, you can just push the channel configuration button, Cubase will ask you to confirm, OK, and you can see that this is now a mono channel. Now you may have seen that the input has also switched over here. It went from the full stereo in to the left input of the stereo in. And that's actually also what happens to the stereo information on the stereo file. Cubase will now only use the left side of the file, so let's have a listen. Yeah, you can definitely hear that this was the side with the condenser microphone, which contained more high end. So you're only hearing the left side of the stereo file now, but of course in the middle because it's a mono channel. If you look at the effects, you can see that the routing is also mono now. Now these new facilities in Cubase 13 are really great. They make switching between mono and stereo on a channel really easy, but there are still some really good reasons of actually converting the file from mono to stereo or vice versa and creating separate files and channels in Cubase. Now I've already created this separate video on that. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.